In this video, we're going to compare the performance of a naive implementation of a Jacobian vector product with the intrinsic implementation in JAX for a particular Jacobian, where we will see a considerable speed up. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video, where I want to show that Jacobian vector products as directly implemented in JAX are superior in computational performance over naive implementations, especially when we have sparse Jacobians. For this, let me start with the implementation of a vector valued function. I want to call this function f, which takes one input x. x is going to be a 100 dimensional vector and the output of the function will also be a 100 dimensional vector. I want to call this u and I want to implement it in a way that if we look at the 50th entry of the 100 dimensional output vector as that it is given as the 50th entry of the input vector cubed minus the 49th entry squared minus the 51st entry squared as well. And that should be like a moving window over the entries. So we could implement that efficiently in JAX by saying that u is given as x raised to the third minus jnp dot roll of x to minus one squared minus jnp dot roll of x to plus one squared. Roll basically takes a 100 dimensional array and rolls it over means it moves the 49th position to the 50th and it rolls it over means that it moves the last position all the way to the beginning. And then this function shall return u. Now let me create a random evaluation point and this evaluation point shall be a 100 dimensional vector. So I'm going to say jax dot random dot normal because I want to use a normal distribution. Then I have to provide a random key by saying jax dot random dot prng key and I'll take 42 and say 100 comma to get a 100 dimensional vector. So here we see it and we can also take a look at it. So it's just a 100 dimensional vector filled with random entries. And then I can query the function f at the evaluation point and then I will also get a 100 dimensional entry out. So look at it, x has to shape 100 and of course this should be evaluation point dot shape 100 and f at evaluation point dot shape is also 100. We can again use automatic differentiation to obtain a full Jacobian. I want to call this Jack here and say this is Jax dot Jack FWD for forward and then on F and evaluate it at the evaluation point. And then if we look at that, well, that's quite a large matrix. And of course we expect it to be 100 by 100 dimensional. And now I want to use matplotlib to quickly visualize the structure of this matrix. So matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then say plt.spy on jack, and quickly bring up the plot. And here what we see is the sparsity structure of the Jacobian matrix. And we see that we have a large band in the center where we have entries that differ from zero. So all the white stuff here is entries in the matrix that are zero. We have some non-zero entries at the top right and the bottom left. However, mostly it's zero. And since the automatic differentiation tools in JAX are not aware of sparsity, at least when we create a full Jacobian, this is allocated as a dense matrix and the zeros are saved. And not only are they saved, but they are also computed. And of course, if you multiply something with zero, it will just become zero. So if we now want to perform Jacobian vector products, we wouldn't need that zero, right? And this is what I want to show now, that if we do a Jacobian vector product with this sparse Jacobian, we are actually wasting a lot of computation. So let me close that down. And in order to make that clear, I want to implement a function which just performs the Jacobian vector product for us, and then we can benchmark it using the Python tools. So let me first clear the screen, and then I want to start implementing a function so we would say define and then maybe something like naive JVP for the naive Jacobian vector product. However, in order to make a really fair comparison, I also want to employ the just-in-time compilation of JAX. So I would say at JAX.JIT, which is a decorator, which takes the function that we're going to define and just-in-time compiles it for us, such that we then get a fair comparison. So let's have JAX.JIT on define and then have a naive JVP, which takes a primal 
and a tangent and recall primal and tangent are just differentiable geometry terms for the evaluation point and the multiplication point that we've seen in the previous video and this naive jvp is first creating the full jacobian for this it's going to call jax dot jack forward applied to f and evaluate it at the primal and then we will get a jvp result by saying full jacobian matrix multiplied with the tangent then we can return this jvp result that's our naive implementation let's also do a chit compiled clever implementation so let's also call this the clever jvp which takes a primal and the tangent as well and this one is not computing the full jacobian so it's not computing these zero entries which are rather stupid to compute right and instead it's using the jvp intrinsics and the reason it's going to be faster is that it's just ignoring all these zero entries by directly performing automatic differentiation on the computation graph okay how does that work so we are going to apply jax.jvp for jacobian vector product on the function f and then as seen in the previous video we have to provide both primals and tangents but we have to provide them in tuples so we'll say primal comma and then we have another tuple with tangent comma and it is of course because this jvp more generally accepts multiple arguments to the function f and this function then returns first the evaluation of f but i mean we can ignore that but it also returns the jvp result which we are more interested in then this jvp result can be returned so we can return jvp result and that's our clever implementation before we can benchmark them we have to run them once such that the JIT compilation is executed so i will just create a random multiplication point again so we're saying multiplication point is going to be jax.random.normal also just some normally distributed numbers that does not greatly matter what kind of value they have and here also let's create an pseudo random number key and this time maybe let's take 43 and also shape 100 and that's of course because the multiplication point shape has to be identical to the evaluation point shape and that's of course because the primal's shape has to be identical to the tangent's shape okay then let's query the naive jvp on the evaluation point and the multiplication point here we get a bunch of numbers let's just remember the last one 1 1.43 and then let's also call the clever jvp on the evaluation point and the multiplication point and we see we also get a 1.3 here so the results they are computing so in essence the result of the jacobian vector product is identical but they differ in the time it takes for them to compute i mean it might not be visible at first because it's still rather fast but let's benchmark it anyways so let's clear the screen with Control l and then let's use the macro time it and evaluate the naive jvp on the evaluation point and the multiplication point let's run that take some time because it's not only evaluating the function once but a couple of times and then we get some statistics on it so we have about 15.3 microseconds per evaluation and some standard deviation relatively minor here then let's also time the clever implementation so time it clever jvp with the evaluation point and the multiplication point let's run that as well also here we see also by the way it took about 100 thousand iterations and here we go now we have uh, 3.6 microseconds and that kind of turns this into let's say about a fourth of the time it takes here and that's just for a 100 dimensional mapping for f you can of course imagine higher dimensional mappings so where f is not just taking an 100 dimensional vector but a thousand dimensional vector 10,000 dimensional and then we might see an even more pronounced difference because the larger the input to f the more zeros or in other words also the higher the ratio between the zeros and the non-zero entries in the sparse jacobian will be and the less efficient the naive jvp will be and interestingly there will even be the time where it will just be impossible to save the jacobian matrix 
because we would have to save all those zero entries. Whenever you are encountering these situations, you have to rely on the JVP intrinsics of JAX in order to circumvent a dense Jacobian matrix, which actually has a sparsity structure. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content like this on Jax. Maybe you're also interested in Julia. Here you will now see similar video as well as a playlist of the content. I hope to see you in one of the next videos.